a fine good afternoon everyone this is Patricia and I am traveling for history I'm at Lakeview Cemetery today in Burlington Vermont because I want to talk about a general and unfortunately for all of us I cannot find that man's grave so I'm going to film in the military section of Lakeview Cemetery before I do that though let me go ahead and pan up and show you the flag so the top of this flagpole here, it is tattered, no doubt. And as I pan back down and move in, I'm going to read to you what you're likely able to read at this point. It says, in memory of G.A.R. veterans resting in a cemetery, Grand Army of the Republic, meaning Union soldiers who fought during the U.S. Civil War. And if I come all the way down, you can see this other bronze plaque. It says, in memory of all veterans resting in this cemetery. So although this area here is primarily U.S. Civil War veterans, if I turn around slowly enough, you can see there are many other soldiers and sailors and Marine Corpsmen, uh, corpsmen uh, buried here. I have found in this area men from the U.S. Civil War, uh, the War of 1812, actually, also somewhere around here, uh, World War I, World War II, and even the Vietnam conflict. Uh, Korean war vets tend to be buried, that I have found so far, in their own family plots. But they are here. So, the man I want to talk about today is General Oliver Otis Howard, Medal of Honor recipient during the U.S. Civil War. Now, there's so much information on him, I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. The first one is um, what I found online uh, and thought the, it was interesting. And the other is his New York Times obituary. So, as I stand here uh, to, and just go ahead and read this to you. Oliver Otis Howard. November 8, 1830 to October 26, 1909, was a career United States Army officer and a Union general in the American Civil War. As a brigade commander in the Army of the Potomac, Howard lost his right arm while leading his men against Confederate forces at the Battle of Fair Oaks, Seven Pines in June 1862, an action which later earned him the Medal of Honor. As a corps commander, he suffered two major defeats at Chancellorsville and Gettysburg, in May and July 1863, but recovered from the setbacks as a successful corps and later army commander in the Western Theater, known as the quote-unquote Christian general because he tried to base his policy decisions on his deep evangelical piety. He was given charge of the Freedmen's Bureau in mid-1865 with the mission of integrating the former slaves into Southern society and politics during the second phase of the Reconstruction Era. Howard took charge of labor policy, setting up a system that required freed people to work on former plantation land under pay scales fixed by the Bureau, on terms negotiated by the Bureau with white landowners. Howard's Bureau was primarily responsible for the legal affairs of the freedmen. He attempted to protect freed blacks from hostile conditions, but lacked adequate power and was repeatedly frustrated by President Andrew Jans Johnson. Howard's allies, the Radical Republicans, won control of Congress in the 1866 elections and imposed Radical Reconstruction, with the result that freedmen were given the vote. With the help and advice of the Bureau, freedmen joined Republican coalitions and won at the ballot boxes of most of the southern states. Howard was also a leader in promoting higher education for freedmen, most notably in founding Howard University in Washington and serving as its president from 1867 to 1873 and aided in the charter of Howard University and Atlanta University, now Clark Atlanta University, in 1867. After 1874, Howard commanded troops in the West, conducting a famous campaign against the Nez Perce tribe. Utley, 1987, concludes that his leadership against the Apaches in 1872, against the Nez Perce in 1877, the Bannocks and Paiutes in 1878, and against the Sheep Eaters in 1879 all add up to a lengthy record, although he did not fight as much as George Custer and Nelson Miles. Most of that I gleaned from Wikipedia, but I'll certainly leave uh, 
a link to my sources in the description below. On to the, his obituary, and I quote, New York Times, October 27, 1909. General O. O. Howard, noted soldier, dead. Last of Union commanders of the Civil War dies at his home in Vermont. With Sherman on march, assisted in operations that resulted in General Johnston's surrender, honored by Congress last year. Burlington, Vermont, October 26. General Oliver O. Howard died at his home in this city tonight. Last week, General Howard was in Ontario delivering his lecture, Abraham Lincoln. His last public appearance was at London Sunday night. On Monday, he returned to his home in Burlington and was apparently in his usual good health. Tonight, while sitting in a chair at his home, he was attacked by heart disease and was dead when the physician reached the house. The passing of General Oliver Otis Howard marks the extermination of all the ranking army officers who commanded the Union armies during the Civil War. Only last year, Congress honored General Howard by passing a resolution which placed him on the retired list of the Army as a Lieutenant General. He also received the thanks of Congress for meritorious services to nation during the war. General Oliver Otis Howard was a native of Kennebec County, Maine, where he was born on November 8, 1830. He was graduated from Bowdoin College at the age of 20, and then obtained an appointment to the Military Academy at West Point. He was graduated from that institution in 1854, being made a second lieutenant. The following year, with the rank of first lieutenant, he was made acting professor of mathematics at West Point. At the outbreak of the Civil War, Professor Howard offered his services to the governor of his native state and went to the front as colonel of the 3rd Maine Volunteers. He participated in the Battle of Bull Run and for his gallant services in that campaign was created a brigadier general of volunteers. He was twice wounded in the arm at the Battle of Fair Oaks while leading his brigade in a charge against the enemy. This necessitated his absence from the battlefield for almost two months, but he was not idle all this time. After his stay at the hospital where his arm was amputated, General Howard made public addresses in his native state and exercised his personal influence in promoting enlistments for the army. Upon returning to his regular corps, General Howard took part in the Pope Campaign of Virginia, participating in the Second Battle of Bull Run. He was promoted to the rank of Major General of Volunteers in 1862. When General McPherson fell before Atlanta, General Howard succeeded him as Commander of the Army and Department of the Tennessee, and throughout the whole of the Grand March through Georgia, his corps formed the right of General Sherman's Army. For his part in this campaign, General Howard was appointed Brigadier General in the regular Army. General Howard took a similar part in the campaign of the Carolinas and assisted in the operations which resulted in the surrender of General Johnston's army in 1865. For this portion of the campaign, General Howard was breveted a major general in the regular army. After the Civil War, General Howard was assigned to duty in the War Department in the Bureau of Refugees, Freedmen, and Abandoned Lands. After taking part in the campaign against the Indians in the West, General Howard was appointed superintendent of the Military Academy at West Point in 1881 and served in that capacity until the following year when he was transferred as commanding officer of the Department of Omaha. He afterward was commanding officer of the Department of the Atlantic with headquarters at Governor's Island in this city. General Howard was the founder at the time of his death, president of the board of directors of the Lincoln Memorial University at Cumberland Gap, Tennessee. He was the author of a number of books and only a few years ago wrote his war reminiscences. The degree of LLD had been conferred upon him by four different universities and the French government made him a Chevalier of Honor in 1884. In his report of one of the Hudson Fulton parades, the Times spoke of General Howard as appearing feeble to this, the general replied in the following letter. New York, October 5, 1909. To the editor of the New York Times, one of our prominent citizens and a reader of your paper desires me to write to you that I am not, quote-unquote, feeble. The correspondent made a mistake because he saw my ardent aide-de-camp tape me to the arm as I pushed through the crowd to the front of the reviewing stand last Thursday. I was able to give several addresses in Philadelphia Saturday and Sunday and got back feeling as vigorous and strenuous as I did at 40 years of age. I do not know whether it is of any consequence whether I am feeble or strong, but we have a wonderful work yet to do to get our great monument of Abraham Lincoln thoroughly completed in this, his centennial year. It is my last work, I have no doubt, 
and I need all the vigor the newspapers can give me. O. O. Howard, Major General, USA, retired president of the Lincoln University Endowment Association. This was contributed by Tom Boudreau. And I just want to mention what a, uh, what a uh, chevalier of honor is. It's, um, it's, it's, a, it's very similar to the Medal of Honor, which is the highest uh, military honor the United States can confer upon uh, someone who served in the, in the military, in any branch of the military. The, uh, the difference between the two, though, is that the uh, Chevalier is also awarded to um, non-military actions, but it is the highest order available. So I'm going to pan one more time around these, these uh, military graves, and I'm not going to say a word. Instead, I'm going to give them a moment of silence, and I hope that you will join me in that. Thank you for coming with me today. I appreciate you joining me. I want to talk about uh, anyone in my videos, but particularly those who received the Medal of Honor. So uh, thank you so much. This is Patricia. I'm traveling for history, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye.